Hi, I'm Tim Schweitzer, and today we'll be traveling to Sexton Island to meet with Rick German, the owner of Long Island Blue Point Oyster. We'll be harvesting and tasting some of these delicious little morsels on this episode of Local Long Island. On the menu, oysters. Let me take you on a journey as we search the native region for the freshest and cleanest ingredients possible. No need to be eating chemical-laden foods filled with growth hormones and nitrates. We are going off the grid and into the unknown, right in your own backyard, on this episode of Local Long Island. So we embark on our trip at an ungodly hour, and I'm kept awake only by this coffee and the burning desire to find the freshest oysters possible. The air smells of the bounty of the sea, and the sun glimmers off the bay like light off a freshly polished pearl. A driver, you ask? I asked the same thing myself. I suppose it wasn't in the budget. Nonetheless, as the great Mick Jagger once said, time waits for no one, and it won't wait for me. I reckon the same thing goes for oysters. All right, so we're here with Rick German, the owner of Long Island Blue Point Oyster. Rick, how are you? Good, how are you, Tim? Very good. So how did you get started in the oyster farming business? Well, a few years ago, when the economy wasn't doing all that well, um, it wasn't working, so I had a lot of free time on my hands. So um, one of the other partners, Doug Winter, approached me and said, um, there's a course being given out in uh, South Hole at the Cornell Co-op um, on how to grow some shellfish. And they gave us uh, 500 oysters to start out with, and we started growing them out there, and uh, by the time the course was done, we had them grow a little bit, but um, they had us in some really shabby area when they didn't do all that well. But we started thinking to ourselves, uh, well, we just took this concept of uh, growing oysters um, and put it on a larger scale and try to bring back the, an original or genuine Blue Point oyster to the Great South Bay. And that's kind of how that whole idea started. All right, so all this talk about these Blue Point oysters is making me hungry. So we're gonna head out on the boat, grab some of these oysters? Yeah, we'll head out to the farm, uh, pull some oysters. Uh, you can't get them any fresher. Going out there now and then coming back to the dock and open them up. All right, you heard it from the oyster man himself. Let's get going. And get going we did. A short 10 minute boat ride out to Rick's oyster farm. Boats, sun, fresh air, oysters. I mean, heck, sign me up. The life of an oyster farmer isn't so bad after all. All right, so Rick, we made it, and this is the farm? This is the farm. This is it off of uh, Snake Hill Channel in the Great South Bay. Uh, here we are growing genuine Blue Point oysters because uh, we are raising them in the Great South Bay. All right, so what are we looking at here? We got bags, boxes. What are these? Where are the oysters? Uh, the oysters are in these uh, floating bags or floating cages. On average, it's probably anywhere between 150 to 200 oysters per bag. Uh, right now, we probably about have about 800, 900 bags on the farm. Uh, kind of late in the season, we've been pulling our, some of the gear off the farm as we've been harvesting the oysters and delivering to local restaurants. All right, so we have all these, all these boxes, all these bags, and how many oysters are ready to be harvested? Do we have, are you seeding here or what's going on? Yes, uh, the farm's broken up in different sections. Uh, over in that far section, we have uh, seedling oysters, probably no bigger than a uh, half an inch in size right now. Um, the stuff we just put out a couple weeks ago, and at one point it was only but a couple millimeters big, uh, but we're probably about up to half an inch, three quarters of an inch, so they have taken on quite a bit of size. The rest of the farm is probably uh, anywhere between two and a half inch oysters to three, three inch oysters. So there's still some market size oysters uh, ready to be sold on the farm. All right, so we have some oysters ready to eat. Can we, uh, why don't we pull up a bag, bring it on the boat? Well, we have to go jump in the water and go grab some. Are you ready? We have to go in the water. Yeah, I'm ready. How about you? I guess I'm not exactly dressed to get in the water, but we're going like this. Got to get the oysters, right? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's go in, let's get wet. Getting wet? No one informed me of this segment, but as they say, the show must go on, and indeed it did. There is an upside to this. As my crew test the limits of their Kegels back on the boat, I make myself more than comfortable in the Great South Bay. Oh, and we also got a bag of oysters to boot. All right, so we went out to the farm, we got our oysters. So Rick, what do we do at this point? 
what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open the bag up by cutting these two zip ties. I'll pull uh, an oyster two out, brush it off, and uh, we'll crack one open. We'll take a look. Awesome, let's go. Slide this thing right off. Slide the tube off. Let's take an oyster out. All right, here you go, fresh oysters. Yeah, look at those. That's what you're looking for in an oyster, not these big things you get at the supermarket. You want them just about this size. This is perfect for right on the half shell or uh, even frying, and that's what we're gonna do a little bit later. What do you do with the, uh, you gotta brush them off? Well, just so you can uh, get a closer look at them, but uh, we normally go back to the dock and give them a little power wash before we take them out to the market oh, for yeah? delivery. Let me grab my knife and now uh, we'll crack one open. All right, cool. So we have our oysters here. We got three of them about to pop open. Got these nice little oysters, and because they're grown in these bags, they don't get much growth on them at all. Makes for a nice clean product. All right, got my knife, and uh, let's see if we can open a couple of these. All right, so how exactly do we open up an oyster? Well. Best way to get in is uh, go through the back, kind of find the sweet spot by their hinge. So, once you pop that little hinge, just slide the blade across the top, cut that top muscle. Remove a little bit of shell here. Yeah, look at that, they got one muscle. A clam has two, so an oyster only has one, right? Uh, yeah, it's one, one muscle, but you cut it on the top and bottom. Tim, I got one more for you. Awesome. There is nothing like a local Long Island Blue Point oyster. Rick, thank you so much for letting us tour this farm and show us how the oyster is cultivated. My pleasure. All right, we're gonna head back to the kitchen and we're gonna cook up two delicious oyster dishes here on Local. Cheers. We sailed back to the dock with our freshly harvested bounty where they were washed and packed with the utmost care. As I travel back to the kitchen with a box of little oysters, I recall the carnage. We just up and took an entire family of mollusk. Heck, we took the whole town. For what? Our own greed of gluttonous human consumption? Vegetarians beware. It will only get worse. I'll make sure I throw in an animal-friendly episode mid-season to appease the masses. But as for this one, more oyster slang to come. All right, so we're back from Sexton Island and we have our beautiful Blue Point oysters here in a dish. And we're gonna get started on a mignette to top our oysters. Let's get started. First, we're gonna start with our onion. We take a red onion, we're gonna cut this baby right down the middle. And we're only gonna use half here, so put this to the side. All right. I'm gonna chop off one end. We're gonna peel off this first layer of skin. Now we're going for a dice, so we're gonna just slide our knife in a couple times from the side and chop from the top. All right, now we're not gonna need too much onion here because we're only gonna do a little bit of a mignette for six oysters. All right. All right, a couple slices from the top. So we got all our slices in the onion. Now we're just gonna run our knife through. All right, and that is plenty right there. Put this onion to the side. We have all our onion. It's chopped very finely, but we want it super fine. So we're gonna run our knife through a couple times. Just gently run your knife right through. Scrape it back into a pile and just keep running your knife through until you get the consistency you want. I like mine very fine. All right, so we're just gonna run our knife through these onions a couple more times, and whew, they are getting to me. Starting to cry a bit, but fight through it. It's worth it. All right, our onions are right where we want them. So bring out our bowl that we're gonna make our mignette in. We're gonna slam them right in our bowl. 
There we go. Clean our board up just a bit and onto our garlic. We're gonna break off three cloves. And we're just gonna smash them to break them open. There we go. And then your skin will peel right off. And we're gonna go and we're just gonna chop the end off of all our garlic. And we are ready to dice. All right, now when cutting garlic, we're gonna mince through, so you wanna smash it with the knife into the board. You're gonna run that knife right through. Perfect. All right, our garlic's in and on to our jalapeno. Now, you don't have to add the jalapeno, it's completely optional, but I love heat. So, I'm gonna go ahead and add it in. You're gonna cut your jalapeno in half, and then in quarters, because you wanna get rid of that pit on the inside. It's a little bitter and the seeds make it super hot. We're not looking to make our mignette super spicy, but just to get that nice jalapeno flavor. So we're gonna take our knife, we're gonna get it started right there, and we're gonna cut out the inside of our jalapeno, and you're left with just the outside. And we're just gonna go ahead and use half a jalapeno. go right through. You want to cut it in the strips first, gather them all together, and we're going to run our knife right through. All right, once again, we're going to want that finely diced. All right, and run your knife through one more time to whatever consistency you want your jalapeno to be. And you can add habanero if you like more heat, or even pear, gives a nice sweetness to the oyster. I like that a lot. Now, onto our lemon. We're gonna roll that lemon to release all the juices. Chop that in half, and you're gonna run it right through your fingers to catch any seeds. One, and the second half. And now your vinegar. You want your vinegar just to surpass the summit of your vegetables. That's where we want to be. A little bit of salt, put a nice dash in there. Great. And a little bit of green onion. Get rid of these ends. And we just want a little bit of green onion here. That's good. And we're gonna mince our green onion. And I got all these vegetables out east. Very local, very fresh, very tasty. So remember, go to your local farm, your local market, so you know it's fresh. All right, we're gonna go right in with this green onion. It doesn't have to be as fine as the garlic or the onion, because getting a nice big piece of that green onion isn't gonna bother you at all. In fact, it's delicious. So now on to our centerpiece, the oyster. So, at home you probably don't have an oyster glove. So what you're gonna do here, is you're gonna take a towel in your hand, and you want these oysters cold right out of the freezer. Shh, don't wake the oyster. If you bang these oysters around, they're gonna clinch up and you're never gonna get them open. So be very gentle. Place the oyster in the palm of your hand. Now I'm gonna grab my oyster knife. This is an R. Murphy oyster knife. I wouldn't use any other knife to open an oyster. Full tang, rivets, this is the knife you want to use. So, to open the oyster, we're going to go in through the rear. You're going to shove your knife right in there where the two shells meet. That is the oyster's weak point. So we're going to put that knife in there, wiggle it in, and you're just going to pop them right open. You'll feel them separate just a little bit. The muscle is still intact. The muscle's right there. So we're going to slide our knife along the top of the shell, and we can get rid of the rag now because there's no more of a threat of you missing and jabbing the knife in your hand. 
So we're just gonna come along the top, our muscle's there, and we're just gonna separate it. All right, and soon as our muscle separated, this top will pop right off. And there you have your oyster. You're just gonna peel her back a bit. You're gonna find that muscle. Just take your knife. You're just gonna run your knife through the muscle. And now your oyster is completely free from the restrictions that was its muscle. Now, ready for the mignette. Just gonna give our mignette a stir here. That smells amazing. Now the vinegar and the salt are essentially almost pickling the vegetables here, so it's gonna give them a unique flavor. Oh, don't forget to add your pepper. You can never have enough fresh cracked pepper. Now add as little or as much as you want. It's completely up to you. I like a lot, so I'm just gonna keep on going. Oh, come on, baby. There we go. And we're just gonna lay our mignette right over top of our oyster. And boy, does that look sexy. Don't move a muscle, because we'll be right back with fried oysters with a homemade tartar sauce that you are not gonna wanna miss. All right, now we're back and it's time to get started on our fried oysters. First thing, gonna get our canola oil. We're gonna put it in our pan. Our canola oil's in our pan and we are gonna turn up our heat. Now make sure you're using canola oil because it has a very high smoke point. You don't want to have your kitchen all smoky. So now onto our oysters. We have six oysters shucked and we're gonna dredge them in some flour. Just cover them lightly for now. Separate them a bit. And our oil's popping, so we are gonna turn that down a smidge. Now, we're gonna take our egg whites into our bowl and we're going to use egg whites because the egg whites are the light part of the egg. The yolk, it will make your batter heavy. You want it nice, light, crisp because the oysters are a delicate mollusk. And you know how I like my mollusks. Sweet, sopping, and never tasting like fish. So now we're going to add some light cream, just a bit. We're going to go ahead and whisk that together. Perfect. Now, dredge all of your oysters. Make sure they're covered completely in flour. All right. Everything covered with flour. Now we're just gonna put them in our egg and light cream mixture, one by one. And then we're gonna push them to the side so we know where our second round is. And we coat our other oyster in some flour. Now, we're gonna repeat this process for every oyster. Now the reason you put your oyster in the flour the first time is to dry that oyster out. Because you don't want to put a moist oyster into the milk and egg solution. Because the milk and the egg won't adhere to the oyster as well as it does after it's dry. Alright. And we are on our last oyster. Perfect. We're going to throw them in the flour and we're going to coat them generously. Right, we have our oysters coated and we're gonna test our oil. That looks great. Now, one by one into the oil. And this canola is working great. Remember, no olive oil, smoke point is too low. We're gonna go ahead and throw our last oyster in there. Take our sanitary towel, clean our hands a bit, and we're gonna start up on our homemade tartar sauce. Give this board a wipe, and here we go. Now that's what you wanna hear. That's what I'm talking about. That popping, the oysters are cooking great. Let's take a peek. Not quite there. Let them go a bit longer on that side, and we're gonna start with our homemade tartar sauce. Very, very simple. Don't buy that store-bought stuff. It will not do the trick. Not if you're gonna shuck and fry your own oysters. The stuff you get at the store just does not have the same flavor. Mayo. Diced up local pickles, got to the farmer's market last weekend, and oh, sweet, spicy, that's what you want. Dump them right in. 
There we go. Little celery salt. Now celery salt is salt and celery seed combined. And celery seed is the main ingredient in that spice you put on crabs. You may know what I'm talking about. Next, a little cayenne pepper, little bit of heat. Now we're just gonna go ahead and mix this up. Little heat, little sweet. That's exactly what you want in this sauce. Oh yeah, look at that. Little on the edge there, don't worry about that. So we have our sauce done and we're gonna check our oysters. These oysters smell delicious. Now it's time to flip them around to Brown Town. Here we go. Oh baby. That's where we wanna be. Nice and golden brown. Now most oysters you see today are uniform in shape, eh, usually around yay big. But back in the day, when New York City was just getting started, instead of hot dog carts, they actually had oyster carts. That's how many oysters there were. And up and down the East Coast, they had a different oyster knife for different varieties of oysters. New York had one oyster, Virginia had another, Maryland, a different style. So the larger oysters would have a larger blade to get in there, nice fulcrum, pop them open. Others were stabbing knives because the oysters were so tough and the shell so dense. But we're dealing with these oysters today, so that R. Murphy knife is the way to go. So these oysters are browning up nicely. That's where we want them. We're gonna go ahead and pop these oysters out. Little paper towel here. Now you can use a draining rack if you like, but we're only doing six, so the paper towel is perfectly fine. We can actually go ahead and shut that heat off because the oil will keep the residual heat and keep on cooking those oysters. Go, two more to go. And that is the color you're looking for. That golden brown, that's what you want. All right. Boom. All six of our oysters done. Our tartar sauce is ready. I'm gonna go ahead and get this area cleaned up and we're gonna be right back to pair both our dishes with a delicious local brew. Okay, so both our dishes are plated up and it's time to pair them with a local ale. Pale ale, that is. Blood orange. And we don't have an opener, so we'll just come down here. Not my first rodeo. And we're gonna pour this into our glass. This is non-breakable acrylic. And it's BPA free, so it's healthy. And um, we're only filled halfway up, so we may just go ahead and fill it up with a second beer. These are so darn good, I just can't help myself. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, you stay. We'll finish the rest. All right, and we're gonna start out with our oyster mignette, and we have a little rose crystal going on there. Class it up quite a bit. Mmm, oh yeah. The garlic's coming through, the green onion is just right, the lemon tingles on your tongue, and the red onion is making its presence known. Now to pair with the blood orange. Oh, the citrus of that blood orange goes perfectly with that lemon flavor onto our oysters with our homemade tartar sauce. A little bit of parsley on top, down the hatch. Mm. Oh yeah, the flour and the egg white keeps our oyster nice and fluffy. And then we have our homemade tartar sauce with the cayenne with that little kick that you'll love. To the blood orange ale. Oh yeah. Now if you're having your special lady over, or a special man, you serve up these two dishes, and all I have to say is, you're welcome. So there you have it. Two great dishes grown locally and harvested right in your own backyard. I'm Tim Schweitzer. Remember, eat fresh, eat local.